before we get into today's interview i just want to plug you guys to a free forex information source that anyone can go to without having to pay anyone a single dime use the link in my description to head on over to the youtube channel of rolio jack now this is a channel that is really important to the forex industry of south africa because on this channel you will learn an array of topics that you can use within your strategy of trading so when you look at what he offers on his channel you will see there's how to trade nas 100 gold stocks txy how to trade high news impact how to trail stop loss in forex trading so there is many different topics for you to learn from and all of this comes at no cost to you a simple click of the subscribed button and notification bell would make sure that you are notified every time rolio releases one of the these high value videos please use the link in my description to head on over to Rolio Jack's YouTube channel now welcome to the channel Mr. Andele it's been a while coming um, for the longest of time the people on my channel have been wanting to hear from you because obviously things have been said um, about you and I think it is only fair that we get a response from you yourself so that yeah can be misquoted, nothing can be taken out of context, and that things can finally be led to an end. So welcome to the channel, Mr. Andile. I welcome you. I'm very certain that my subscribers are excited to have you here as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, man, Radoflex. It's really much of a privilege to be here. And more especially, man, you know, it's a bigger platform. Everybody's always watching it. And I couldn't wait as well to like have a genuine conversation with you as we just been, just been talking on, on, on Instagram and stuff like that. Finally, now people also get to hear where am I headed, what's been happening, what's going on. And having to actually answer questions that I feel like a lot of people have, you know, like I'm just breaking the ice, man, because at the end of the day, we want to be free again. So, yeah. 100% and this can only go in a positive way. I really appreciate you coming to the channel. I really appreciate your energy. So we will get straight into it. I think there is yeah. one question that I have that I think everyone else has as well. And I, uh, I yeah. think, okay, so let me just say it like this. The first half, of course, obviously I don't want your ex-relationship with the GOATs to overshadow yeah, this yeah, yeah. interview because obviously you are an individual with your own company and at the end of the day um you also have something that you can contribute to the industry and i just don't want that so the first part will obviously be about the goats but then thereafter it will be about life after the goats cause uh like I told you um, before I pressed record that um, I believe that you leaving the GOAT is also you standing firm in yourself and in your mission. Um, so how did you come across the FX GOATs and how did it get to that point where it was like you're part of them now? Uh, okay, that's pretty much of an interesting question because... Um, it's quite crazy how I, I came across the FX code, right? So what actually happened was um, in 2019, I was the South Africa's toppest model, right? So as I was the South African top model, um, there was a point where we were doing a campaign where we are, we are modeling for, um, what is this? Um, Gender-based violence and stuff like that. So I had to be the, the, the model trainer for Emmanuel Mabitela and as well as Tabitha. Right. So as we, I'm busy training them how to walk, how to posture and stuff like that. Obviously, in my head, I have this cockiness that I'm the South Africa's top trader. I mean, uh, model. So I, it's my part to tell them what to do until I think somebody, my, bro, my brother, basically. So my brother who introduced me to Forex, which is Ndu, she's the owner of Anonymous FX. So he put me on to onto trading. And then he told me that they are one of the people that actually are killing it in trading, you know. And I was like, mm. it became so being interested. I remember there was a point where Jaguar, it was before the thing was FX Goats and stuff like that. Jaguar hosted um, a, a, a competition whereby you needed to analyze. Then he, he, So I analyzed and I became the best top student at that time, only on Jaguar, not with, it was not FX Goat back then. And then I passed, then Jaguar gave me like some few tips how to go about it whatever 
and then he started texting me in private for me to actually attend um, their seminars. So when I got to their seminars, what happened was the first seminar, I was like normal like everybody else. But whatever they were teaching, it was like, ah, bro, I do know this. So what's the whole point of one, two, three, one, two, three? And then I just wanted to get to know them. You know, I just wanted to get to know them, understand what type of people they are and having to know, like, the whole thing of building a relationship. So after then, I, re I remember the last seminar, it was the one whereby I was now privately talking to Tapelo and then um, Tapelo was like, I should come through. I helped them on that seminar that was at school. And then after that, they just had negotiations amongst themselves. And then I, I joined FX Go. I remember that time, it was like around 20, 2019, 2019 May, yeah. It was around that. Then uh, I had to join. I, jo I joined it, and then we started sitting down. Okay, guys, what's the plan? Okay, the plan. We are FX Gold. We are this. We are that. So that's how everything started broadening up. So then we grew up as a group, and then yeah, bro. I, I believe like everybody played their part, man. As far as the company, we were still together and stuff like that. It was really an amazing journey. No lie. Ah. No, no lie. I'm really glad to hear that because um, some yeah. people really believe that um, you, when you left, you did have like a bad taste in your mouth. And I was like, OK, now let's hear from him, because at the end of the day, he is the only one that experienced that, that will be able to tell us how it all um, went down. So when it comes to them, I think the most anticipated question, because if it's got them answered it and mm -hmm. I think your if or how you answered rather that will let mm -hmm. the public know well is it true what they said or are they just throwing Andile under the bus here so um mm -hmm. the question that is on everyone's lips is actually but why did Andile leave all right why did Andile leave the FX code <laughs> All right, cool. I won't really beat around the, the biggest parts as, as um, some things are just, you know, we, we are dealing with them lawfully, right? Um, we are lawfully dealing with some things, but uh, one thing for sure is we have no bad blood. That's one thing I'm going to tell you. I don't know if you saw, I was talking to Tapelo and Jawa in December, and then we just said this year, um, let's erase this, whatever that's happening in the community by that people think we hate each other. You understand? Like people think we're beefing, whatever, whatever, and stuff like that. And with me, man, I'm one person who believes in peace. Like, I don't have somebody I think I hate because I love everybody genuinely. And that's why, if you remember properly, um, when I when the time they really, to be honest with you, Ned, to be quite honest with everybody else in this channel, I, um, I don't know if you noticed last year, there was a song that I took out. It says, choose your people on the way to the top, we separate, right? Already when I dropped that song, things were a bit, uh, there was, just a bit of distance and, you know, like there's a lot of things started clashing by that time, you know? And then um, in December, um, I think you started noticing that in December, um, there was a bit of a gap between me and them, right? The bit of gap was created by, they were going out alone and I just was working on myself. And then there was a point where I had to change my name. If you remember properly, I was FX Gold Andy. And then I eliminated the FX and I started being Gold Andy. So by that time, I was already starting to brand myself for me because I just felt like, you know, if we are no longer in the same version, man, it kind of affects the person you want to be. At the end of the day, I can't leave for the sake of trying to please something that I want to be part of. At the end of the day, you, you, you need to leave for your best self. Like, if I'm like Andy Le, who's like this, this is me. I don't have to be whatever, whatever, and stuff like that. Nah. And um, that's just, just generally what happened. So I, I just started being like, okay, so now me and these people are detached. And one thing for sure, I'm an affectionate person, brother. That's one thing I'll tell you. When I love, I love with my whole heart. So I love them and seeing them detached from me, it broke me, bro. They were like going out alone. Hey, and I'm now shocked what's going on and stuff, you know. But at the end of the day, obviously, yeah, bro, we still talk, we still fine, but it broke me. So I started as well detaching and starting to fall focus on myself but still part of the ethics goals right so being part i was still part of the group but now i was working towards greatering it while greatering myself and then um when i when the reason why i left it was it, it was mainly because um 
honestly, it, it was it, it was becoming a very sad space because I love these people so much. You get me? We grew to become brotherhood and whatever. And now seeing our relationship kind of decreasing slowly but surely, it was killing me. I couldn't take it no more, you know. And then and, and I had to be honest with them. And then, um, yes, there's some certain things that quite happened. Then there's, as, as I think Andrew said, it was being dealt with in court. And by far, all I know is it's dealt with lawfully. Obviously, it's lawfully dealt with. We have never attended court. That's one thing I'll tell you. It's lawfully dealt with. But we're looking at this year, we're doing things differently. We're separating our egos. We're separating us not talking to each other by actually facing each other, being in a meeting and talking. How we really broke up is really fucked up. So let's fix our shit and get straight to the point. What's going on? And there's just been a lot of rumors going on, man, that Andile did this, Andile did that. It's a lot, man. But the main reason, purposefully, was um, the detachment was just, the, us detaching was just too much for us to can be able to fix things. Because along me, along the gap as well, like, I realized that I'm starting to want to be myself than be part of the FX code. You get me? Like, for an example, have you seen, like, breaking up with a relationship, in, in, inside a relationship? Yeah, that's what was happening. And that's what I didn't want. I didn't want to feel like they are getting used or something like that. So I just like, like you know what? I'm rebranding myself. I'm me. And this is me. And that's just it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a really matured way to move about and to um, just realize that we are friends. And even though we have grown apart, that don't mean we need to have there's bad blood. And it is like you say, um, Andile, there is a lot of rumors um, flying around, which is why I just thought, now, nah, listen, let me come to Andile. And this is also one thing that I want um, the mentors in this industry to also understand is I will also be doing things a whole lot different. So in the year, I will be scheduling more interviews with you as things come up because I don't just want to sit here and villainize people because at the end of the day, if I had to go on what is out there about you in the media what people have said by that standards you are supposed to be a rude arrogant person but the person that i'm talking to is not giving me that vibes you're humble you're gentleman and you really um understand what is happening around you and how to react to it i mean anyone would come here and just throw the goats under the bus but you are trying to still keep the peace because within the near future, who knows, you guys might even still come back together again, you know? Yeah. Um, and when it comes to them, I promise you, this is the last question about the goats. I don't want to yeah. hop on and on and on too much about that, but okay. I need to go back to that iconic live that you had with Ferguson. There's one yeah. question that dude people's lips are burning to ask this when ferguson said uh, you already know what i'm gonna ask when ferguson said he hasn't seen a rich yeah. fx coach student right there's a lot of people that's wondering is there truth to that and why did andela not stop him or tell him but listen that's out of line. What you're saying there, um, it's not correct. Because yeah. people took your silence to that. Because to me, I see that as two things. I'll be real with you. The silence could be you confirming it, or the silence could be you that's so shocked by what he just said that you don't know how to respond to it. That is literally the two categories that I put your reaction in. But you here now, so I get to ask this from you. Yeah. Why were you silent? <laughs> okay, brother. So if, if, if you can really where the interview started, right? So uh, when, the, when, the, when the live started, Ferguson was smoking. Right. That, I don't want to talk anything bad about it. There's nothing really bad. Right. But I told him, bro, look, please, as this life starts, don't say anything or mention whatever. Just be live. Let's talk about what's going on. And, and that's it. Right. So he, he, I think it was a slip of your tongue when he said that. And I was just like, okay, with a, a reaction of being shocked, because I, 
been part of the ethics codes. I've seen students succeed. I've seen them, you know, I've seen good things happening. So I couldn't attest to anything because like it was a spotlight thing. So I just, I just decided to be quiet. I was like, I, I don't know. And if, if, if you focus on the, as the, the, the life continues, I was like, bro, I, let's, I said, let's focus on ourselves. What's your next step, right? Because I was trying to run away from what he's saying. As I have said, I don't really talk about people, bro. Like even one of my lives, I think uh, um, you are the only person recently I mentioned on my life. That was basically about people asking me about, you, you posting videos about me and whatever. I'm just like, nah, bro, right? I'll never really post things that are bad um, about me. Um, he just generally like just the facts. And if you listen to the facts, you're going to get the facts, right? So, so that was it. And then I just, I was shocked, bro. Like, no lie. I was shocked because as the live was starting, I had already said, bro, don't say anything out of smoking weed. So I guess he had a sleeper of a tongue and then that happened. Unfortunately, he apologized because it, it was not true. You know, I, as, as a person from experience, I've owned FX Goals. I've been part of the, of, the, of the top league. So I know what we've been doing to possibly 80% of the people. So yeah, that's just it, man. Like I, the shock, it was, it was being shocked. I was shocked. Okay, okay, now that's good. Um, and guys, they have heard it from Andy herself, and I really thought that it would yeah. be that that you are just shocked and that you couldn't. Because I, the moment he said that, I saw you took um, you took a scape from your ugly, and I took that also <laughs> as like, okay, now this man don't want to say anything because he knows that because this is what people don't understand about a slippery tongue and people gaslighting you in the comment section you might not have wanted to say like ferguson for all we know ferguson might not have wanted to phrase what he wanted to say in that sense but because he was high and because there's a lot of people gaslighting him in the comments he felt like he needed to say that but like I said, we're not here to make excuses for him. He's his own adult. He needs to own up to yeah. what he said. Um, but yeah. after you left FX Code, right? And um, to me, I found it strange on the one end, but I was also a little bit happy for you because it was like you are moving from strength to strength. You're leaving FX Coats to be the CEO of IV4X. Tell me. Yes. How did that come about? Because people want to know about that as well. Because um, yeah, one thing yeah. is in the public perception is that one moment you were the CEO of Ivy Force, yeah. and boom, the next you are a um, affiliate for Hot Forex, promoting Hot Forex things. So people were just yeah, wondering, yeah, yeah. and and even me, I was also just wondering, like, how did that transpire? Yeah. All right, so as I left the FX, so um, obviously trying to grow and whatever, everybody wanted me. Like in all honesty, that's what I could tell you. Like there's no broker that didn't approach me as I left the FX goals. Why? Because I was getting comments like, hey bro, hey man, we've been looking at your work, you're top, let's work, this and this. Like it was like everybody was waiting to catch me, right? So at that time, as that was happening, yo bro, I was promoted, I was, I was, I was, um, uh, what is this? Approached by a lot of brokers, RCG market, your vault market, your trade 205, your, I, your Infinox, your what if every possible you could think about, they actually came for me. But I was just like, nah, you know what, guys? I ain't trying to be part of any broker. I just want to trade and focus on my thing. And then IV4X came and they came with a better deal. Bear in mind, I just left, I just left a big group, a biggest group in the industry. And now- The biggest group in the industry, yeah. Yeah, and now having to shift the game and be a CEO, at least it's, it kind of still maintains where I'm at, right? Because I feel like the biggest fear, for, but the, the biggest fear I had before I left FX Goals, right? It was, okay, Andilo, before I even typed that resignation letter, I was like, okay, who are you besides FX Go? So I had to redefine myself. Who am I, right? And then I remembered, I'm GOAT Andy. And what that means, it means I'm greatest of all traders, and Andy, right? I was like, okay, so if I'm this, how can I better myself? By bettering myself is finding myself within what comes in my power. I have the capability of leading 
that is the reason why everybody would cry and want me to be something of them because I have this strength of being able to be a leader. So if I'm given a platform of being a CEO, then I was like, why not? You know, and then uh, a lot of things actually transpired, bro. No lie. So um, how the whole thing transited from leaving IV4X and I actually posted about it, but I didn't really post as way as I posted on my, on my, on my, so I just posted on my story that I left it. So what happened was, bro, I won't lie to you. Yo, the deal was nice. It is as it was presented to me. Holy, holy moly. It was nice, bro. It was genuinely the nicest deal I've ever had in my entire life. Right? So as things are just like, I'm like, damn. I can imagine myself, you know, like running off some 3 million, 10 million. And I'm just like, nah, bro. Let's work. You feel me? So now as we start getting into work uh, a lot of things became a bit grumpy you know um a lot of things man i'm not talking bad of iv4x i'm either not saying anything that's bad i'm just saying the way as i joined and after signing the contract and here's the thing and after signing the contract um i remember even when i was signing the contract was protecting them more than me so that on its own for me it became a red in flag right but at the same time it didn't still wanted to to figure out what's going on as it's owned by a woman. And by far, I know women to be very much caring, loving. They wouldn't really mind, you know, like women are just women. They're just those people. So as finally getting into the main thing that's going on, ah, bro, I started seeing like, okay, this, it might be me taking a step back or taking 10 steps back because the broker is still starting and there's just a lot that type of person i am you know to be honest with you i love me i want to be part of something you know it's like it's like somebody coming to you right right as somebody comes to you they like well right can you please um find fund me i have this idea of a business right would you rather fund a moving truck or would you rather fund an idea oh we're gonna go with that moving truck exactly so it was the same thing that okay you guys are saying this, but when I get it, this is this. So what's the main in investment Sorry. towards growing? What's the main investment towards growing? And the biggest thing that was said is getting numbers. And then, okay, cool. We get numbers. Then what? And then uh, I started seeing that, nah, bro. Nah, 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 nah. I having to request for an office. It, it not, it's not forthcoming. Um, requested for a certificate. They gave it to me, but it took long before they did that. So a lot of things, to be honest, they were working against my personality, nothing else. Like my personality, I deal with everything that's in light. For an example, as well as having to transit from IV to, to HF, HF markets. So with HF markets, it was, the, it was, okay, we sat with them down. They were like, yo, Eddie, look, um, we want you to work with us. And I was like, you know what? To be honest with you guys, I don't really work with brokers, but if you give me the best platform, I wouldn't mind using it. So here's where I'm coming. Where I'm coming is like people confuse promoting a broker with recommending a broker. There's a difference between promoting a broker and recommending it. So with me, I don't promote a broker. I recommend based off my experience, right? For an example, um, I, I, people have seen me flipping accounts from hundred dollars to thousand, from thousand to ten k. They've seen that, and the experience I have with a certain broker—that's what I put on. That is why when you go to my YouTube channel, you won't find me speaking about one broker. I speak of multiple brokers that I've used based off the experience I had. So that's what people need to know that I don't promote brokers. I wouldn't be like, "Hey guys, look, tap this link and use it." Now, when I post, I say, "This was possible because I used this broker." And for the fact that I never really use, um, I, I, I actually tag the main broker. So you have an opportunity of either using my affiliate link or using the main broker's link. So you have a choice. It's, it's recommendation. It's not promotion. So that's why people get, get, get confused and stuff like that. So that's how the whole paradigm shift actually happened. Tio, um, I'm really glad that you got your, because when businesses start out, there's a lot of things that could um, go sideways to, so that people 
can get their business to go ahead. So I'm actually glad that you took a stance and was like, okay, nah, this is not where I see myself. This is not where I want to be right now. Um, so although there's a big title and a nice paycheck involved, let me rather move away from this and um, focus on something that is already moving, like you said. Um, one thing that I'm very keen to hear on, because I think this is a trend that um, I'm sure you have also noticed amongst the mentors in um, South Africa, and there's nothing wrong with it. Let me just get that out of the way. There's nothing wrong with it. But do you see yourself heading up, or if the opportunity arises for you to head up a brokerage of your own and run it the way you wanted it to run, would you do that? Um, with you, bro, um, the brokerage industry is dead. That's one, that's one thing I'll tell you. That is why right now in South Africa, we had the zero ranking brokers I've ever seen in my entire life. I won't really mention part of them because that's the main thing. I rejected some of their deals that they wanted to give to me. It was because I don't really understand everybody be working the same way and stuff like so they, they are killing the brokerage industry. But I got something coming forth, right? And this will be um, a prop firm um, business. So a prop firm business, it we will be actually so basically we are working with prop tech. Prop tech is um, is in um, UK. Yeah, the prop tech is in UK. But before anything launches. We're going to present every legitimacy because basically it's a prop firm that we're going to be running in South Africa, but it will be running under the bigger company, you understand, which is called the prop tech technologies. You have to check it out. So we will be actually using funds to fund people like, it, you know, funded accounts, right? As you've seen, I yep. recently passed my, yeah, as, uh, we, I recently passed my two challenges and stuff like that. So I might as well say, okay, guys, uh, my partner with my partner is called Morne. So um, our business will be, uh, the prop firm will be called MDP um, Funding Made Simple. So it's going to come in very soon. Uh, it's, it's one of those things I'm kind of looking into branching in. Not a broker. End of the day, people don't longer need a platform to trade with because there's a lot of brokers out there. People now instead, they have the skills, they have everything. They just want proper funding. And then they are good to, you get me? So yeah, that's actually where I'm 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 headed. Yeah, it's MDP MDP uh, funding made simple. It's Mofukeng Duplessis. So Mofukeng is my surname. DP is my partner's uh, surname, and then we're gonna be working to, together towards that ha happening. But broker, nah, bro. The brokerage industry is dead. We will just keep using the ones that have been have existed for the past twelve years. That's where I'm at. These babies that are keep coming <laughs> and going. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not part of that, man. <laughs> I am really glad to hear about your um, aspirations to move into the prop firm um, industry because from my own experience with, because um, you've probably seen what happened with that American idiot that came here and thought that you could like scam people. But one thing that I noticed from that, right, was that there is a huge demand for because at the end of the day, business is business, and um, as the public, we are just requesting that the business that is being presented to us and that's being given to us is above board. Look, because look, mm. one thing that we most definitely know is here is a lot of talented traders in South Africa, but one thing that we also know is due to our economy state, um, we have a lot of talented traders without funding and without yeah. funding you can't do anything so i'm actually really excited to see what you guys have in store with this prop firm i'm also going to be checking it out no cap i'm also going to be getting an account <laughs> and um one thing that i wanted to add on because this is what i said right i want to make a positive contribution yeah to the industry as well, because I can come here and sit and do scam, 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 scam all day that I want. <laughs> but um, without yeah. me shedding light on things that needs the light, that needs the attention, the scams will always 
prosper and I don't want that. So I'm giving you right now a heads up, Mr. Mofu King, that I will be signing yes, up sir. to your uh, um, um, prop firm. Um, I also do have um, some people that might be interested as well. I'm going to plug that to them as well. Um, and it's like these people that I know personally that also passed yeah. my Forex funds challenges, FTMO challenges. So um, from that perspective, I'm really excited to see where that will go. And um, yeah. yeah, like I said, I'm, I think I'm going to start a series on that because there's a lot of things that goes on yeah. behind the scenes when it comes to um, these funded accounts and what yeah. you as a trader personally go through with these um, funded accounts. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, Providence FX because there's uh, one question that I um, wanted to ask there. Um, when you posted about Providence FX, right, obviously you have your own supporters and people that is in your corner, right? And those yeah. that still on the fence or those that still uh, supporting the other camp, um, yeah, they might have felt like while you were still in your first camp, you must now know which camp that is, um, you were planning and plotting for Providence FX. Um, and you know, they're just, they're just uh, like you say, it forms part of that rumor thing that you spoke about earlier, where um, there's a lot of things that's being spoken about without people truly knowing um the truth so so basically the question that i had for you was while you were building uh providence fx people people were thinking that you were like betraying the fx code right and um if you are planning for yourself and you're planning to move into um a bigger role which is what providence fx is because it is yours you own it it is um for your namesake if i can yeah. say it like that um so while you were busy with fx code were you busy setting up and preparing for that role all right here's the honest truth right so as Bear in mind, I had said um, I'm, in, I'm an affectionate person. And me being an affectionate person, the minute I see people deattaching from me, I start building a different circle. So with the people that I have at Providence, right, here's what people don't know. These are the people I started trading with back in 2019 before I joined FX Code, right? So as we were trading together, there are people that I taught how to trade. There are people that we've been trading together, sharing ideas. Even while I was still in FX Gold, it was never a group, it was never nothing. It was just a circle of people who are interested in the same direction, right? So as that was happening, so I to them, I was like, hey, brothers, look, let's, let's, let's go, go, go back to our back self, back in 2019, where we used to share ideas, share trades, share opinions and stuff like that. So I started growing bond with them in, while I was deattaching with the FX Gold. So that's what happened. The, the game we built it me a better circle where I can belong and me belonging is like people who would, would be okay with me sharing ideas working with them and stuff like that so after leaving the FX code so here's one thing that made me be like okay cool now let me switch on and jump to Providence FX so as I was sitting down right um I woke up one morning and then my fiance told me he's like hey dude do you see what's happening on social media I'm like what Bro, it was a shocker when I saw that statement. No lie. It was genuinely a shocker. I was like, how? And then what's happening here? I was confused because there's a lot of things mentioned right here. There's a lot that was being said about honesty and integrity, blah, 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 blah. A lot of things that didn't connect and make sense. And then what broke my heart was when they said there's investigations ongoing. And I'm like, what the fuck? which investigations is that because i personally know that if you are investigating somebody then definitely you investigate them while they are still there not while chasing them out how do you investigate somebody when they left you get me so broke my heart because it came across as if they were tainting my name they were kind of throwing me under the bus and it was genuinely a, a, a the most saddest day of my life i don't want to lie man i remember 
after reading that statement, I sat down, bro. I cried. It as much as I might be the strongest man, but I cried and I was like, bro, imagine the people you believe fucked with you this hard. Instead of breaking things the way they broke it with Ferguson, they choose to broke it with me like that, right? And then I was like, you know what, Andy? Uh, at the end of the day, I am not that person. I'm not going to respond the same way as they did. I'm not going to do the same way as they did. I'm just going to be who I am. As I said, I'm one person who's very kind. I'm very peaceful. I don't like anything. That's why I had to open up with my statement and put it as professional and peaceful as possible. So after that happened, already after I saw that statement, immediately, instead of reacting on social media about the statement, I reacted by now saying, okay, I texted all my brothers on the group we had before. I was like, bros, um, I'm thinking of starting. I need a group that I could I was still with my brother. Can you hear me? No? I can I can hear you now. You were uh broken up there for a minute and then it all just gets yeah. up at once. All right, no sorry, no problem. The, the people people keep calling me. I'm sorry, I'm in an interview. <laughs> You're a wanted man. <laughs> I'll get Hey, bro, it's crazy, man. Hey, but yeah, as I was saying that, like, that broke me. And I just, you know what? Uh, I said, okay, look, um, I want to start something, right? And this is when I want to start a movement whereby now, the way I had wished I could be with the FX GOAT, now, now this is what my own self. Building a mm, circle mm. of people who are brothers. Building a circle of people who, like, there's no need to de attach, bro. If you feel like there's something I'm doing wrong, let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Let's solve it. Let's solve it. Let's not de attach. Let's stick together up until the dead end. So that's that's genuinely what I did. And that's why I waited for the time I post my statement. And after the statement, I instantly launched the, the company. And then I heard I heard the interview with with uh, the, you had with 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 Andrew. Um, when he said it looked like I got something that was already going on he doesn't know people only realize the retaliation they don't realize why did the retaliation happen already i was attaching from my brothers and one thing i love being in a circle like working towards the same goal and it's not a matter of something then it was maintaining what i love and having mm. to find these brothers that i've been with for the past times it was that that's simple for me to be, for them to be like, I remember, bro, hey, it was crazy. I just texted in the morning. I was like, hey, guys, look, I'm planning to start this and this and this and this and this and this and that. Before 12, everyone was on. They were like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everyone. That is why it didn't take me 10 years to get a group. It didn't take mm. me 20 years. Within a few hours, I already know who, who's going to be part of Providence. So, yeah, that's actually what happened. I'm very, I'm very glad to hear that. Of course... Let me just say, um, I don't think people yeah. understand the weight of what it's like to be a man, especially um, for you yeah. guys, the weight of what it is being like a high value man. Now, apart from the financial losses that could have incurred, like you said, um, it was it was sad. And, and apart from it being sad, I can guess you felt a tad bit embarrassed as well or, or humiliated because it felt like, these guys are moving places without you. They are excluding you from plans. And um, obviously that is going to seem a different way to the public, right? And I completely understand that. So um, I'm really glad that from a personal perspective, you saw that, listen, this is sad. It could crush me, but I could also stand firm and move with what I believe. Um, so kudos to you yes, for sir. not laying down for for deciding 
even though this seems like it could be the end of the world for me, I'm going to turn it around and um, <laughs> do something much better with it. So I'm, yeah. I'm so, I'm so glad that you, that you stood up there. So as you know, the FCA is um, making new plans to have, cause I've, I don't want to say, I don't want to get ahead of myself and say they watch my videos. Although there yeah. is one of them that did say that to me at the XM um, seminar. Um, but with them, moving towards a fully regulated industry. Are yes. you making plans to get FECA regulated yourself? Uh, essentially, bro, because in it, you know, we, are, we are working with the, what we call a financial market, right? Um, obviously, as we are introduced to trading, FSCA was not actually attached in a lot of things, mm. but now since, since the Forex industry is becoming the biggest industry, they are now starting to want to get deeper and deeper and deeper. So this will be my first goal, bro. To be honest with you, the FSCA license is a fucking expensive. Dick, dick. It is, you know, it is expensive. So um, what I'm going to do will be I am going to assign myself under a certain business that is FSCA regulated so that when FSCA approaches me, at least I have something that stands for me to being regulated. That's the first step. And then after I make more money that I want to make this year, that is when I'll consider buying my own FSCA license. But for now, to avoid the clashes that might happen about this being happening, this being happening, I'm just going to assign myself under a business that is FSCA regulated, which will give me the license and say, you can operate under our license while this is happening, then once I'm fortunate and big money enough, then I'll definitely buy my own FSCA license. Mm, mm, mm. Now, recently, this is this is something that um, I was really excited for. I was very happy when I saw you posted this, um, but that FTMO certificate, man, <laughs> I was super impressed by it because, and let me tell you the reason why I, I am impressed with it. It is easy yeah. to fool the South African public, you by now know this. It's fucking Bro. easy to fool us. But Easy. having a certificate from a company as big as FTMO lets me and the viewers know and everyone that have seen that. So in case you guys ever know, um, 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 Mr. Mofoking is FTMO cer certified. So the moment my I saw that... Fun. My sorry, forex my forex fans. Oh. Sorry, not yeah. FTM, my forex fans. So yeah. the moment I saw that for me, it was like, nah, this brat decided he was going to walk the distance because that is that is scrutiny on the next level. <laughs> and I don't think people understand how it feels yeah. to have every single trade of yours under a microscope, to have every single mm. stop. I wouldn't say have every single stop loss questioned, but mm. to have a daily limit to be in a mind state of knowing, okay, I cannot fuck up because if I do, this account is going to be taken away from me. So in your words, what made you yeah. go that route? All right, brother, to be honest with you, um, our industry is pretty much fucked up. The, 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 that's the honest truth. Um, and with all honesty, um, the trend has been people trap people with materialistic things like buying cars, flexing about this, flexing about that, money this, money that, and all of that. And then the truth is when you go to the background about trading, they know nothing. Like that's the honest truth. I, but I've met traders, right? And we have to talk about the chat yeah bro we would love you would love so i was like okay andy how do we brand ourselves to be something different right and i was like my main target is to be a full-time trader and how do i become a full-time trader imagine if i could pass a prop firm account that automatically realize that i'm a, i can trade bro i am a generally a good trader because it is not easy to actually pass a funded account it's not easy. That was <laughs> that was actually my next question, eh? Because I, like I said, um, 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 Monet did approach me with um, PropTech, and this is what they also like about the the more recent people in the industry. Whenever they are busy yeah. starting things, they um like to speak to me about it and just uh, figure out some things where they are also stepping in line and. 
I, I do to be honest, I, 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 I these challenges, as you can see, I'm a little bit nervous, but these challenges really look fucking intimidating, my bro. I won't lie to you. So, how yeah. difficult was it, my bro? And like, what did you do to pause to get to the other side? Aya? Hey, man. Hey, hey, yo, bro. I don't want to do. Okay, let me start here. So, the difficult part is account, right? Because you're thinking, if I don't follow these rules, I'm losing this kind of money, right? And then um, even right now, today, I posted my, I passed another one. Now I'm a 200K funded account. I, I passed uh, my posted certificate right now um, with the Leveled Up Society. I am actually a 200K funded trader right now from the previous one. So I'm still funded on the other one. And now I'm funded on the other one. So the first one was basically a trial to actually see how PropFirm works, right? And yo, the most difficult thing is having to consider the drop. The, the oh, bro, it's really hard to catch up because I'm used to flipping accounts. Like I could take a thousand today and take it on six thousand, and that takes a high risk. This means even the drawdown might be more than actually what I'm gonna gain, right? But with prop firm accounts. The drawdown is limited to a certain extent because if you don't follow the rules, you lose the account. And that's not what I want. I don't want to lose the account. So having to scale up our life. I remember the first challenge. I had to test how the lot sizes work. Um, I used lots, the standard lot, which is lot size one. Yo, it put me on a very crazy drawdown. I was like, okay, so this is not the lot size for this account. Then I took it down to 0 0.50 lots. And then when I take it there, it's still not a good account. Okay. When I started, I went down to like, I, I remember my daily drawdown was 500. My overall drawdown was 1,000, was 1 1.2. So it was 12% of $10,000. And then um, my daily was 500, was 5%, which is $500 for $10,000 account. And then um, I was down like, I think it was 9.1, 9.1, close to 8,000. And I'm like, holy smoke. So I before I was like, okay, Andy, but we are good traders and I believed in myself. It took me three days to pass the first phase. And then it took me one day to pass the second phase. Because now I've adjusted to the risk it wants and I've adjusted to how to really trade it. So it took me an entire five days to pass my first challenge, my first and second challenge. And obviously, you know, they have like the daily trading limits whereby they have to say you have to trade 10 day minimum days and whatever. So I just to play, have to play 0 0.01 every day to just compound to the numbers they want. And then when I officially got that certificate, bro, I was the most happiest person because it, it's essentially a good way to start my year. It is. It really is. Challenge, bro. It was crazy. And now I got the second one today, of which I passed on the fifth, but the certificate couldn't, couldn't come through because they need the KYC and whatever, whatever they need. And now I shifted from being a $10,000 funded account trader. I'm now funded with $200,000, bro. Like, yo, you can imagine, imagine making 60% of a $200,000, right? And then the profit split is 85%. They keep the rest. Do you know sure. how much 85% of, bro, it's insane, dog. Like, yeah, that's what it's I mean. a lot of money. But in most inspiration, yeah, inspiration mostly came from, I look up to no one in South Africa. That's the honest truth. I don't look up to no one in South Africa. I don't have somebody that say I wish to be like, yeah, I would say I have acquaintances, people I would work with. But if I say I have a trader I look up to, I would be lying to myself because I look up to international people. People who are international operate differently, bro. Like you can count, okay, my, one of my biggest motivations and one person who's my main inspiration is Mark Hutchison. He's the, he's the founder of Falcon Trading Guided. That mm. is the reason why I had, to, I had to even buy the glasses, buy black t-shirts, so that I can match up to what, what, how he is, you know? And then when it comes to being a successive trader, I look like, up to like traders like Lambo Raul, um, FX, Alex G. Those type of people leave the type of way I want to be as a trader. Not that these mentors we have in South Africa that sell information, sell whatever, sell whatever. Mm. Like, it's all about sales in South Africa, bro. That's what I hate. People focus more on sale than actually being actual traders. So that's, that's actually where I don't want to be. 
and as I said, bro, I watch your channel. It's just that some things I can't say as a trader because I'm going to be looked at as a hater. You get me? So a lot of people are more on sale than a lot of people who can trade. Like they folk, if they make a sale, they're done. That, that's what they want. So true. Make a sale, I'm out of you. So, so true. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm trying to not to tap in. So with me, I don't teach people trading because it's what I'm focused on. I only give people trading because you are like, um, yo, Andy, I wish you could be my mentor because you teach so simple. Your trading style is so nice. Oh, okay, let's do it then. Why not? So basically for me, it was kind of like a calling, not really something I thought of doing. Like people were like, they love how I trade. They love what I'm doing. The way I was, to the way I am, I want me to open a platform where I could teach them how to trade. I was like, okay, what could be wrong with creating another stream of and you are not forcing anybody to enroll with you you're not forcing anybody to learn with you you just have something that there if people want to learn how you do things so that's the main part that that's the reason why i even create the platform or a portal whereby i have my students have access with me because if you notice a lot of mentors in south africa bro um they make a sale after they make a sale they give you what you want then they're done with you that's true that's how it is what's another another how can i make the next how can i make the next sale that's how it is right with me it's not about what's the next sale it's about are you aware how iphone operates iphone doesn't sell on tv but the people that use iphone they sell on its behalf would yeah. you recommend um prop firm trading to uh, the south african public Yeah, I would. Um, um, to be honest with you, I would recommend prop firm trading. The main reason is we, as we said um, the other time, the other day, I said there's a difference between being a skilled trader and being a, um, a, 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 a talented trader. We have a lot of traders that are talented that don't have capital. And we have a lot of traders that are skilled that don't have capital. So with me, it's not a matter of fact of capital. It was actually me trying to get the biggest funds. Obviously, I could fund like your $10,000 and whatever, but I imagine myself trading like a 300K dollars account, bro. That's like, that's crazy because with the 200K already, that's like 3 million already. So I looked at the bigger picture of having it in that way. And I would recommend it. Why? Because it will prove if you have the skills to trade, it will prove that you are a good trader and well, it's going to give you enough capital to grow because even the profit splits, man, it's actually nice. Like imagine if you are starting already, you are funded $10,000, you make yourself like a young $6,000, you take 85% of $6,000. That's like, uh, um, I think five, something like five point something thousand dollars. That's close to 100K. And you just withdraw that every time. Like you have that kind of money coming bi-weekly because that's what prop firms do. They give you a capital and then far more stairs, you still continue you they you, you you scale up that's what they call it you scale up you would earn from 85 percent to 90 they take 10 percent. you keep 90 percent. the more profits you make the more they give you discounts on the accounts you can buy you buy bigger accounts you make big money that is how you tap into your goals man i would recommend it but i would as well never neglect people from having their side accounts of which they could play with the same as i do i still have my other accounts on the side that i trade besides prop firm accounts but my main focus is prop firms why because they they give they give enough and big money they have a lot of potential of um giving big funds bro like that's where you could withdraw your 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 own like a million your your you know man you can withdraw a lot of money from a prop firm account man like that's just how it is so i would recommend it to south africans but as well as i don't think a lot of south african traders would survive a prop trading account <laughs> I, would like. I don't know. i think i think this is where that series that i want to start with this prop firm that i'm going to join i think that is where that is so important because it will shed because i'm i mean i am preparing to like show a full behind the scenes like literally every day of okay this is where the, the account is now um if i lost this is how much i lost this is why i lost if i won this is and you know it it, it will kind of just portray the back end of what people do not see because people just normally see the house yeah. the car the stacks of cash the nice lifestyle but they don't yeah. see the stress 
behind the scenes. Um, my last question that I um, do want to ask you before um, we wrap things up is when it comes to your future plans, my brother, what do you have planned for this? Obviously, there's some things that you maybe want to keep secret, but yeah, yeah, yeah. is there anything that you have planned for the future that the public can look out for um, in terms of uh, providence or just you personally? So, all right. All right. In all honesty, um, okay. Where my life is headed, I'm headed to being a very much of a um, private figure, right? Um, the reason why I say private figure is because me being public about the things I have has led me to actually almost losing all of them. For an example, with my car last year, I was involved in three accidents last year. And sure. then, bro, that was that was crazy. So I saw that, and man, in as much as you try and outwork yourself, um, there's always an evil eye that's looking at it because it's crazy, bro. How can you have three accidents in one year? It doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't with the same car, the same place, and the last accident it nearly killed me. But a lot of people didn't know about it. But on the on the lighter hand, is um. Bro, hey, I don't even know what I'm trying to talk about it, but people should expect um, what I call the takeover, you know? Like, what I call the takeover is I'm not taking over the industry and carrying it within my hands, but I'm carrying, I'm, I'm taking off the industry by outworking every one of my peers, you know? I am just focusing on outworking everyone on my team. Not that I have competition. No, I don't. I don't regard anybody as my competition. I am my only competition. There's nobody who's even scaring me when I look at them and be like, nah, that's a competitor. I have none of those. As I said, I look up to people who are international and I feel like if that's your competition, then in South Africa, then you have zero. Like I don't, bro, nobody scares me in South Africa. You can be big, you can be owning bigger money. You can have bigger cars. You can have all of that. I have no sense of fear for no trade in Sorry. South Africa. Um, my bigger, my bigger picture. Okay, people for some sort of reason can expect. Uh, uh, mm, uh, okay, let's not say it actually, but that, that's all I could like say. I believe nobody expects to see that from a South African trader and then I'll be branching as well to like properties as well um, I'm already in process of one um, um, I'll, I'll actually once everything is done once everything is done that's when I'll but I don't as I said I'm, I'm venturing to being a private figure I don't want to talk about my stuff and all of that but somewhere somehow you will see it that okay oh so this is happening oh this is happening oh this is happening but the one thing I could talk about is the problem that's coming and us having to get the FSCA regulated, working under an FSCA regulation, uh, um, and the bigger picture is that it's just that I'm gonna take the industry together with my team, and me when December hits, we will be, we will be the top one of the leaderboard as Providence FX, and Andy will be the you know, I don't know man, I don't know like that's what I could say. <laughs> You know, now I'm so, I can't tell you how excited I am for your future plans because your energy literally gives me excitement because normally when someone is energetic about future plans, that literally means that behind the scenes, they have yeah. put in the work, they have made sure that whatever they are going to come forth with is solid. And I am really, really looking forward to do that. Um, I really want to wish yeah. you well, and I'm very certain as a lot of the subscribers on this channel that um, also want to wish you well for um, your road ahead. And then also on um, a real note, thank you so much for taking the opportunity to sit down and to talk with us. I know it is not yeah. the easiest of things to come onto a platform where you literally have no control over what is going to be asked of you. Um, the only thing yeah. that you can control is yourself. And I think you handled it pretty darn well. Thank you so much for talking about the things you have spoken about. Um, yeah. And in future, if anything pops up, I'm most definitely going to call on your number so that we can <laughs> most definitely catch up in an interview setting again. Yes, sir. Not a problem. Just the last words for it. 
this is an advice for every trader. I know they do watch your channel just that they don't like you. But guys, take this channel not as somebody who's criticizing you. Take this channel as somebody who guides you how to do things right. Because um, if you all have noticed it, he doesn't, Randall doesn't really backlash people. And unless your response to what, what you're doing is bad, that's when you'll be, be like, is this new, this is genuine, this nigh, this what, 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 whatever. <laughs> But that's out of a perspective of people not re not receiving criticism as a constructive measure to change yourself. Like with all honesty with me, um, people quite get shocked why you don't have a lot of content that's bad. That's because, bro, I look at the channel, right? And I look at the channel, every video drop, I look at it and I'm like, okay, cool. So right out here spoke about this and this and that. So this might be bad to do it, but I can do it if I do this and this and this. And that, that kind of opens up our because I think some of us traders we are only blinded because we are traders, but because your time, the research and whatever, it it, it kind of is a short way to us knowing what than us looking at you in a bad way, saying you are a hater and stuff like that. The day people realizes that you are hated for being the real and a truth a truthful person. That is when a lot of traders would grow and stuff like that. But guys, don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe. This is your boy, the Goat. Eight. I'm gonna. You already know what's going on. Thanks, man. I'm gonna leave links yeah. to your YouTube channel in the description box so that people can Thank check you, out your man. platform as well because you also yeah. released some tight content on your YouTube Thanks. channel. Thank you so much for joining uh, us, Andile, and I'm looking forward to what the brilliant. future has in store for you, buddy. Keep well. Thank you so much, man. Stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye.